What would you do if you were alone and heard a whisper in the dark? Have you ever been home alone and felt a chill run down your spine? Ever heard a sound that didn't quite belong? These moments can be unsettling, but what if they were just the beginning of something far more terrifying? Let me take you through my own haunting experience that made me question everything I thought I knew about being alone. Grab a blanket, turn on all the lights, and prepare yourself for a journey into the unknown. It all started when I moved into my new apartment. It was a charming place, the kind you'd describe as having character. The creaky floors and vintage fixtures added to its appeal. I was excited about this new chapter in my life, living independently for the first time. My friends helped me move in, and we spent the first night celebrating with pizza and movies. By midnight everyone had left, and I was alone. As I settled into bed that night, I heard it for the first time, a faint whisper. At first I thought it was just the wind, or perhaps my imagination playing tricks on me. I brushed it off and went to sleep, but in the days that followed, the whispers became more frequent and harder to ignore. A week after moving in, I was sitting in the living room working on my laptop. The sun had set and the apartment was quiet, too quiet. Suddenly I heard the whisper again, clearer this time. It was coming from the hallway. I froze, straining my ears to make out the words, but they were just out of reach like a radio station slightly out of tune. Hello. I called out, my voice trembling. Silence answered me. I got up and checked the hallway, the bathroom, the kitchen, everywhere. There was no one there. I convinced myself it was just my mind playing tricks, a product of stress and fatigue. But the whispers didn't stop. Every night they grew louder, more insistent. They started to sound like someone was trying to communicate, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. The lack of sleep was starting to take its toll on me, and I became increasingly paranoid and anxious. One night after another restless sleep, I decided to set up a camera in the hallway to see if I could capture anything unusual. I was desperate for answers. As I reviewed the footage the next morning, my heart skipped a beat. There in the grainy black and white video was a shadowy figure standing at the end of the hallway watching my bedroom door. I replayed the video several times, trying to rationalize what I was seeing. Maybe it was a trick of the light or a malfunction with the camera, but deep down I knew it wasn't. I felt a chill run down my spine. I was not alone. That night I could barely sleep, terrified of what I might see or hear. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the curtains, sent my heart racing. I lay in bed, clutching my phone, ready to call for help at any moment. It was around 2 a.m. when I heard it again, the whisper, but this time it was different. It was clearer, more distinct. Help me, it said. I bolted upright, my heart pounding in my chest. The voice was coming from the living room. I gathered all my courage and stepped out of bed, phone in hand, recording everything. The living room was dark, but I could make out a faint figure near the window. As I approached, the whisper grew louder. Help me. Who are you? I demanded, my voice shaking. The figure didn't respond. Instead, it moved closer and I could see it more clearly now, a woman pale and ethereal, her eyes hollow and filled with sorrow. I felt a sudden rush of fear and compassion. How can I help you? I asked. She pointed to a spot on the floor near the window. I looked down and saw a faint outline, as if something had been buried there. The next day, with the sun shining and giving me a semblance of courage, I decided to investigate the spot the figure had pointed to. Armed with a small trowel, I started to dig. After a few minutes, I uncovered a small, dusty box. My hands trembled as I opened it. Inside there were old photographs, letters, and a locket. The letters were love letters, written by a woman named Emily to her fiancé, who had gone to war and never returned. I spent hours reading through the letters, piecing together Emily's story. She had lived in this apartment decades ago, waiting for her fiancé to come back. When he was declared missing in action, her heart broke, and she was consumed by grief. The last letter was a farewell note, saying she couldn't bear to live without him. I realized that Emily's spirit was still trapped here, unable to move on because of her unresolved grief. I knew what I had to do. I took the box to the local cemetery and found a peaceful spot under a large oak tree. I buried the box there, saying a prayer for Emily and her lost love. That night the apartment was quiet. The whispers had stopped. For the first time since moving in, I slept peacefully. I knew that Emily had finally found peace. My experience taught me that sometimes, the things that go bump in the night are more than just figments of our imagination. They are echoes of the past, unresolved emotions that linger long after we are gone. 
If you ever find yourself alone and hear a whisper in the dark, remember my story. Sometimes those whispers are a call for help from someone who needs to be heard. If you made it to the end of my spine-chilling tale, thank you for reading. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your own Home Alone experiences in the comments below. You never know who else might have a story to tell. Stay spooky and stay safe.